Hi guys, so today we will be discussing respiratory system for laboratory. So we will be focusing on uh, gross anatomy and microscopic anatomy of the respiratory system. We all know that the respiratory system is the organs and other parts of the body that involves in breathing when we exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we have uh, we have to be familiar with the term expiration and inspiration. So uh, inspiration and expiration is a ventilation mechanism of your respiratory system. So when we say inspiration, the air moves through the tract to the lungs and when we say expiration the air moves out from the lungs so expiration is similar to exhaling and inspiration is similar to inhaling so as i have said we will be focusing on the gross anatomy and microscopic anatomy of your respiratory system so for the gross anatomy uh, we have the nose nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and lungs so we will deal with each one of them as we go through this discussion. So other term for pharynx is your, your commonly, commonly used term, which is your throat. For your larynx, it is the voice box. For the trachea, it's the windpipe. And the uh, alveoli, which is inside the lungs, is also your air sacs. So how do we breathe? So breathing starts when you inhale the air into your nose. Or mouth and then it travels down the back of your throat and into your windpipe which is divided into air passages that is called bronchial tubes so for your lungs to perform their best these airways needs to open so they should be free from any inflammations or swelling and extra mucus as the bronchial tube pass through your lungs they will divide into smaller passage called bronchioles so the bronchioles end in a tiny balloon like air sacs which is called the alveoli your body has about 600 million of alveoli the alveoli are surrounded by a mesh of tiny blood vessel that we have discussed on our circulatory system we call it the capillaries here oxygen from inhaled air passes into your blood so after absorbing oxygen blood goes to your heart and then your heart then pumps it through your body to the cells of your tissues and organ as we have discussed on the circulatory system, blood vessels, and heart. So let's start with the part of your nose. So your nose, as well as your mouth, is an opening that pulls the air from the outside of your body into your respiratory system. So the external cartilage and bone forming the anterior wall of the nasal cavity or the entire cavity. So within your nose, we have different parts. So we have the nasal septum or the wall division. Then we have the nares, the external nares, which is the nose trails, and the internal nares, which is the opening of the nasal cavity to your pharynx. Then we have the hard palate. The hard palate is the floor of the nasal cavity. Then we have the concave, or the which is divided into three, which is the superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha. And we have the paranasal sinuses, which is an air-filled mucus lined spaces. When we say nice sinuses, it is uh, a spaces within uh, fallow organs or bones. So, paranasal sinuses is divided into the maxilla, frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid sinus. Lastly is the nasal lacrimal duct, which is the tube that conducts tears, which is connected to your opening, or very small opening in, in your eyes. This photo shows the wall division or the part that we call the nasal septum. As you can see in this illustration, as I have said a while ago, the concha is divided into three. We have the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, and the inferior nasal concha. So the pharynx or the throat is the tube that delivers the air from your mouth and nose to your trachea or your windpipe. So we have three parts of the pharynx. We call it the nasopharynx, which is the upper portion, the oropharynx, which is the middle portion, and the laryngopharynx, which is the most inferior, and it's, this is posterior to your larynx. I will show a photo of these three parts later. So the nasopharynx is divided into uh, four parts, which is the uvula, or the inferior boundary, boundary landmark, the soft palate, which is the floor of the nasopharynx, the pharyngeal floor, which is the posterior part of your nasopharynx, and the lateral wall, 
which is the inferior opening to the eustachian tube. While the oropharynx, which is the middle portion, is divided into two, which is the palatine and lingual tonsils. Next part is the larynx or the voice box. So larynx is a hollow organ that allows you to talk and make a sound when air moves in and out. So when we talk, you can feel your larynx that is vibrating. So your larynx contains a laryngeal cartilage, which is a nine piece, nine pieces cartilage that fit together. So we have three pairs and three single piece. So the three single piece that I am saying is the thyroid, the cricoid, and the epiglottis. While the three pairs, meaning six piece, is the cuneiform, corniculates, and the arythenoids. So other parts of your larynx is the vestibular folds or the false vocal cords. So the false vocal cords is the superior of the laryngeal ligaments. While the vocal folds or the true vocal cords is the inferior of your laryngeal ligaments. So here is a photo of your larynx and its part. Next is your trachea or the passage that connects your throat and your lungs. So trachea or windpipe conducts air between your, between your larynx and your bronchi. So it is a C-shaped cartilage ring. Also seen in your microscopic view that it is C-shaped cartilage and it has two division on its inferior end. So we have the left primary bronchi and the right primary bronchi. So as you can see in this illustration, your trachea terminates into your primary right and left bronchi. So the next part is your lungs, which is two organs that remove oxygen from the air and pass it into your blood. So we have discussed this in your circulatory system. We call this uh, exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen inside your lungs, the pulmonary uh, circulation. So that involves your artery, your veins, your heart, your capillaries, and many more parts of your circulatory system. So the lungs is divided into lobes, which is divided into lobules. So we have the right and left lobes. And um, lungs is found in the pleural cavity. We have discussed this in chapter 1 in the left and right portion of your thorax or your chest. So we have the right lung, which is uh, divided into three parts, which is the superior, middle, and inferior lobe. The left lung, which is the superior and inferior lobe only, since on the left side of your lung, the heart is um, contained in the in some areas in some part of your left lung that's why your right lung is bigger than your left lung we have discussed this part on chapter one which we call the pleura or a serous membrane which is a connective tissue sheet that covers the lungs so the pleura contains a cavity or the space a thin space between visceral and parietal filled with pleural Fluid. So, pleural fluid is a very important part of your um, pleural cavity because the pleural fluid acts as a lubricant and allows the pleurae to slide effortlessly against each other during respiratory movement. And in laboratory, we continuously use the pleural fluid to, to assess or diagnose the cause of fluid buildup in your chest cavity, like uh, we call that uh, fluid buildup, pleural effusion. So an initial set of tests typical includes the fluid proteins, no? the pleural fluid proteins, the albumin or the LD level, and also the cell count. So this is the pathway through your alveoli or the air sacs that communicates with the respiratory bronchial. So first, um, as I've said, the trachea terminates into left and right primary bronchi. So from the primary bronchi, it will then continue to your secondary bronchi, which serve a, a separate lobe. So from the secondary, then it will continue to your tertiary bronchi, which serve as a lobule, and then to your bronchioles, which is a small branches that will then continue again to your terminal bronchioles, which, which is the end of the branching of your bronchioles. So this respiratory, uh, this terminal bronchioles will then continue to your respiratory bronchioles, to your alveolar ducts, and then to your alveoli, which again is the air sac that communicates with the respiratory bronchioles. The, air, the alveoli is the tiny air sacs in the lungs. 
where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Well, the bronchioles is the small branches of the bronchial tubes that leads to your alveoli. I will um, show you a photo and illustrations of your alveoli and bronchioles. So let us review what I have said a while ago using this illustration. So as I have said, from your trachea, it will then um, terminate into your left and right primary bronchi. From your primary, it will then continue to your secondary bronchi, to your tertiary bronchi, and then to your bronchioles. In your bronchioles, we have the terminal bronchioles and then the respiratory bronchioles. From the respiratory bronchioles, it will then continue to your alveolar duct, which will then continue to your alveoli, where your gas exchange takes place. These are some illustrations of the microscopic parts of the inside of the lungs. So you can pause this video to have a better view or review the parts, microscopic parts of your lungs. To know what is the difference between the bronchi and the bronchioles. So as you may know, the bronchi is near the trachea, which is a C shape, which is uh, composed of a C shaped cartilage. So in your bronchi, the C-shaped cartilage rings are gradually replaced by irregular plaques of cartilage. So in bronchioles, they have no cartilage at all. The bronchioles are less than 1 mm in diameter and undergo further division, the last of which is the char characterized by the loss of goblet cell. Uh, this is an illustration of your alveolar sac, your respiratory bronchioles, and your alveolar duct. So this is a closer view of your bronchi. Majority of the respiratory tree from the nasal cavity to the bronchi is lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. The bronchioles are lined by a simple columnar tucuboidal epithelium while the alveoli is lined with simple squamous epithelium for better gas exchange. So this photo show the, shows the uh, closer look of the bronchi. As you may see, the mucosal epithelium is composed of pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. And we, will, we also see a muscularis mucosa which is made up of smooth muscle. And also we see a bronchial ring which is made up of cartilage. Next part is your diaphragm. So your diaphragm is a muscle that helps your lungs pull in air and push it out. So it is a sheet of skeletal muscle inferior to the lungs and it reduces the pressure towards the thorax whenever the lungs expand. So the next topic would be the microscopic anatomy of your respiratory system. So before we start, most of the part of the respiratory system from your nasal cavity is composed or lined with an um, epithelium which is the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So the trachea is uh, lined with the same epithelium, which is also the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So it has a cilia and a goblet cell. So the outer wall is composed of smooth muscle. So alveoli is uh, lined with a different epithelium, which is the simple squamous epithelium, and contains a lot of pulmonary capillaries for your gas exchange. This uh, squamous epithelium is called type 2 pneumocytes. So the next topic would be the test that we conduct. So these are the pulmonary volumes and capacities. So we have the spirometry, which is an instrumentation to determine the basic pulmonary volumes and pulmonary capacities. So it is important, especially in research, and in clinical situation, also in exercise training. So we have pulmonary volume, or we call it the lung volume, and the pulmonary capacities. When we say pulmonary volume, it is the amount of air that are moved in and out of your respiratory tract. Well, your pulmonary capacities is a combination of the pulmonary volumes. So we have the ventilation or the movement of air from in and out of the lungs. We have discussed this a while ago wherein the expiration is also called your um, um, exhalation and your inspiration is also called your inhalation or your breathing in the air. We have two types of spirometer or the instrumentation that is used to measure the lung capacity of the air going inside and out of your respiratory tract. So we have the wet spirometer and the dry spirometer. As you know, wet, we use water. 
or a vessel is inverted in a container of water and produces wavy spirogram. Well, the dry spirometer is used uh, is a spirometer that uses a gauge that measures the air volume as you exhale into it. Here is a sample photo of spirometry. So we have different volumes that we measure in spirometry. So we have the tidal volume, the ERV, the IRV, the VC, and the RV. So let's start with tidal volume. The tidal volume is the volume of air moved uh, into and out of the respiratory system during normal breathing. So the normal value is 0 0.5 liters. So next is we have expiratory reserve volume. So the expiratory reserve volume or ERV is the additional amount of air that can be exhaled after a normal exhalation. So it is a reserve amount that can be exhaled beyond what is normal. So conversely, we have the inspiratory reserve volume or the IRV, which is the additional amount of air that can be inhaled after a normal inhalation. So, the last two one is the vital capacity, which is the volume of air that can be expired or exhaled after a forceful inspiration or inhalation. So, the normal value for this one is 4.6 liter, while the residual volume is the volume remaining in the lungs after the maximum respiration. So, the normal value is 1.2 liter. So, these ones are the important formula that you have to know these ones are the one that we have defined a while ago so tv's total volume irv is inspiratory reserve volume erv is expiratory reserve volume and rv is the residual volume so there are a lot of conditions that can cause inflammations uh, like swelling and irritation pain or otherwise affect the respiratory system these are the allergies, asthma, which can be chronic or just mild, infections like pneumonia, bronchitis, influenza, and diseases. We have the respiratory disorder that includes the lung cancer, uh, COPD, or the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, aging. No, while we age, lung capacity decreases as you get older, and damage, damage to the respiratory can cause breathing Problem. So, how can we keep our respiratory system healthy? We should avoid pollutants that can damage your airways, like secondhand smoking, chemicals, and radioactive gases. We should avoid smoking yourself. So, we, do, we should not uh, smoke because it affects greatly our lungs. So, eat a healthy diet with a lot of fruits and vegetables. Exercise regularly for a healthy lungs. And to prevent infection, we should always wash our hands often and getting a flu vaccine um, each year so i am posting different practice quizzes practice questions in this youtube channel so if you want uh, to watch some of those uh, practice questions you can pause each question i will just posting the link in my description below and um, you can answer it and practice answering all the questions thank you